This is a tutorial video in a series where we'll be making a wave defense game. In the last video, we asked people to comment and vote on a poll to decide what to do next with this game. And the majority of people voted for enemies. So in this video, we're going to be expanding on the number of enemies and the wave system in the game. So let's get started. Currently, there's just the one enemy type, so I'm going to add two more sprite objects with the same kind of animations and variables to go along with it. So I'm just going to copy this one and change out the images. And now that that's done, I'm going to put them all into a group and I'm going to call it enemies. And now if I put these into the game, they should react just like... Oh no, wait, hold on. Okay, so in the events sheet, I can swap out anything that was called ghost enemy and change it to enemies, the group. Make sure that's the right spelling. All right, and if I press replace, all of these points here should all be changed to enemies of the group instead. Just need to double check that it actually worked. Okay. Now if I start the game, they're getting hurt, they're going towards it. Obviously the health bar is breaking because they weren't supposed to have that. There we go. Okay. So that worked out. Now we need to be able to spawn those enemies in, separate from the way that we spawn in ghosts. And for that I'm actually going to implement a wave system. So I'm going to add a text object, call a wave number, uh, pick the same font I guess, and we'll put it on the UI layer. There we go. And now we'll create a new timer call it wave, and then add an event where we check if the timer is above, let's try five seconds just for testing. And we'll create a scene variable, call it wave as well, have it start at one, and we'll change this to one. Okay and add the action to change the scene variable wave by adding one to it. All right, there we go. And we'll change the enemy spawning rate to equal the wave. So the higher the wave is, the faster enemies will spawn. Let's say three seconds divided by the variable of wave. Variable is just the scene variable of wave. So every five seconds that will go up and we will modify the text of the wave number to equal in quotations wave plus that um, oh it needs to be a text variable so we will change this to we'll search through the expression builder to get it because it's easier scene variable number wave. There we go. It adds the two string for us to make it a text instead of a number. Okay. Now let's try that. All right. So one enemy spawned because we're on wave one. So it's three divided by one. So it's three seconds.
this didn't change. Uh, they seem to be coming in faster. Oh no, they no, they're not. Need to reset this and change the scene variable to be equal to one. Oh, this needs to be wave as well. Wave. There we go. Okay, now try this. Okay, so there's one enemy. We're on wave three now, so I should get one every second. We're on wave four, so I should get one every three-fourths of a second. And it's going to speed up to the point where it's going to get ridiculous. Okay, cool. So that works, but we'll change this to something more reasonable, like 30 seconds. Now on top of this, I'm going to change it so that the health of the enemies is going to actually change along with it. So when we're here and we create the enemy, we'll change the health of that enemy's group to equal 3 plus that wave variable divided by 3 and rounded down. Okay, so floor will round it down if it's less than a whole number. So when we're on wave three, the enemies will have four health because it'll be three plus one. And then it won't go up again until we reach wave six when they'll have five health and so on and so on. Okay, change that there. We want to change the maximum and their current health as well. Change their health points to equal their max health. Okay. Now let's try that out. So we need to get to wave four to see this work in action. Oh, we'll change this to five again and do that. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Wave four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Oh, there we go. Okay. You get the idea. So when this enemy is created, their max health and current health get changed based on the wave variable. And now to make it so that the enemies spawn at different wave levels. To do this, we'll add another scene variable. Properties, scene variable, add. I'll just call it random enemy. And then when enemies get spawned, I'll use an event to change that number so it picks a different enemy. Nope. So we use random in range, so it'll pick a whole number. Zero, two, and we'll need a little bit of algebra for this. If we want a new enemy to show up every three waves, then we can do it the same way that we did it for the health. So let's go there. Maximum health. We'll steal this. Copy. Okay, paste in here. So now... When an enemy gets created, this scene variable is going to change from zero to whatever this will be. So if we're below the third wave, it will be less than a whole number, so it'll get rounded down to zero. So this will be zero, zero. If we're at wave three to six, or three to five, this will round down to one, so it'll be zero to one. And then if we're on wave six or above, or six to eight, this will round down to two, so it'll be zero, two. So it'll be zero, one, or two. And then we want it to stop there because if we go beyond that, we'll have more numbers than we have enemies for. So for that, we'll use min, which is another expression that's wonderful to have. Uh, we need a comma right here. Yep, there we go. And then two. Nope. What? Um, I 
Ah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Brackets. Okay, so now it's zero or the wave variable divided by three, rounded down, and then min. So it'll pick the smallest number out of the two options, which is either this or two, which means if the variable for the wave goes above nine, which would turn this into three, which is more enemies than we actually have. Instead, this min expression will change this to two. So it'll pick two instead of the three because it's the smaller number. Okay. So this is either zero or whatever enemy number we're at. And now we need to modify this quite a bit by moving all of this down here. We'll use the scene variable as the condition. Scene variable for random enemy. And if it equals zero, we'll spawn the ghost enemy. And since it's already at zero by default, then it's going to pick the ghost enemy for the first three waves. And then on the if it picks one, we'll spawn, oh, oh, we'll spawn the spider. And if it picks three or two, sorry, we'll spawn the imp. Okay. We'll see if this works. So we should only see ghosts for the first three waves. Oh. There's a spider. The spider stole the health bar. Ah, this should be changed to enemies. It must not have been changed with the search bar. Okay, so now I need to make these apply to each enemy type. So I'm going to shuffle these around and change the names so they work with each enemy as they spawn. And now I can copy this down for each enemy. Okay, so now when the number gets picked for the enemy, it creates the enemy object and then applies the health and creates the health bar and links it to that specific enemy. And it'll do that for each one. And then regardless of which one gets picked, it's going to reset the timer and pick a new number. So the next time it'll be a new number and we get a different enemy. Now let's see if that worked. Here come the ghosts on the first three waves. More ghosts. Oh, there's spiders. More spiders. They each have individual health bars. Uh, increase power. Boop. It's hard to tell, but also they, they also have higher health. And there comes the imps. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So their health was going up. So the imp at the end had five health because I shot it twice with an attack that had two power and it still had one health left. So now to make a little bit of variation there, I'm going to change the base health of the spiders and imps so they'll operate differently. There you go. So now the spiders will have two health, the imps will have four, and the ghosts will have three, and then that will just scale up as they go. But to make them also a little more different, I'm going to change how they move. So I'm going to affect this event here and change this to imp, ghost, and spider. Oh, that is the wrong event. <laughs> here. Here we go. So I'll make three different versions for this. Change this to ghost, change this to spider, and change this to imp. Okay, so now the imp will move towards the center at a speed of eight. So it's a little slower, but it has more health. And then the spider will do 12. Ooh, 
Let's see how much of a difference that is. See if we want more or less. Maybe we need a little bit more of a difference. Yeah, there we go. That should be enough. Oh, you're not stopping. Oh. <laughs> Had these backwards. There we go. Yeah. Great. So now we have three different enemies in game that are a little different from each other, spawn based on the number of the wave that we're in and how difficult the game is, have their health scale to go along with the difficulty of the game, and it's all working as intended. Now the next video will be the last in this series. So we need to decide if we're going to add power-ups to the game or change the enemy AI so that they all act differently. So if you could leave a comment below letting us know what you'd like to see next, that would be great. And after you're done doing that, check out this video.